Hit on Gracie, Henry Gracie, 1993. Our father created the Ultimate Fighting Championship to showcase the effectiveness of Gracie Jiu Jitsu to the world. And now that every professional fighter has added Jiu Jitsu to their arsenal, we're going to break down how they're using it so you can add it to yours. BJ Payne, Matt Hughes. Dang. There, was, there toe -to -toe? Used? To was there Jiu Jitsu used? There was Jiu Jitsu omitted. How about that? Yeah. In other words, certain principles of Jiu Jitsu violated, which is why the knockout happened. Toe to toe, you know, no one expected BJ Penn to knock out Matt Hughes. Makes sense. Matt Hughes is physically stronger, but man, BJ Penn hits hard. And uh, all it takes is one shot and it connected. Why did this happen? Dang. Violation of a critical, simple, basic Gracie Jiu Jitsu principle of distance management. Of course, Matt Hughes was the stronger one, so he felt confident going toe to toe, stepping in there, being within that one arm length distance, swinging punches, but guess what? BJ's hand came right down the center, right over his arm here, connected on the chin, and it hit Matt so hard that Matt thought it was a knee or a kick to the head, in they, his own words. They both felt very confident, yes. so they both did it. But yeah. they kind of have to do that. That's the way the game is played. That's the way the game is played. Now, we're not saying either one of them did anything wrong. That's how you fight, that's what it takes. MMA, you go in there, you throw blows, someone gets knocked out. Now, what happens is this. If they fought again, three weeks from now, it could easily go for Matt. The knockout punch and that's the critical realization I think it's important that Matt and all of you realize that this, this shit isn't a surprise you weren't surprised right you shouldn't be surprised you should be expecting this whenever it's that exchange you have to expect for whoever to get knocked out 50 50 hands are flying it could be anyone's victory left right doesn't matter any day of the week you can switch it off so everyone who is shocked that BJ Penn knocked him out don't because hands were flying they're heavy fist and uh, yeah and they're and they're both you know great fighters great with their hands now, how does this apply to you, the at-home viewer who's sitting there on your couch watching the, you know, the UFC? What is it? How does it apply? Well, they're going to go out there and think to themselves, you know what? Wow, I need to do what BJ Penn did. That's how I'm going to win my fight. Well, look how good he did it. It was so simple. One, two. Yeah. Boom. Put Matt Hughes right. down. We're not going to learn that. We're not so concerned with what happened in the cage. We're concerned with how that affects the minds of the viewers in terms of how to win a real street fight, a real self-defense situation. Now, if you've been training boxing for, you know, 14 years every day, that's a different story. And you get in a fight with someone who's about your same size, throwing blows might be a wise choice because you might land a good shot, they go down, it's your best bet. However, if you're fighting someone who is bigger, heavier, and stronger, and you get in a fight, and both of you are throwing blows, left, right, left, right, it's a 50-50 draw, and if they're yeah. bigger than you, there's a better chance they hit you. So what's the strategy? Well, distance management. The goal is at all times to be too far from the punch or the kick, and then if the hands are flying, to of course close the distance and then be too close. Now, of course in professional fighting, he's gonna do every, everything he can to stop that engagement. However, in a street fight, in a self-defense situation, when someone's trying to knock you out with punches, the safest thing you can do is engage, control, and then of course get the fight to the ground where you can then control and of course win the fight with a submission or something more, a safer strategy, not just throwing wild punches. So don't be surprised that, uh, that BJ knocked him out because they're both very, very gifted athletes and uh, the hands were flying. It can happen any day of the week. Now, so most important thing there, distance management. Lyoto Machida and Quinton Rampage Jackson. Incredible fight, okay? Rampage by decision. Lyoto Machida had an interesting third round, so a lot of grappling scenarios there. We don't really care who won the fight. We could vote though that at the end, Machida was doing a little better. Yeah, a little, more top, a little control, a little dominating. Yeah, and if the fight would have kept going, Machida could have won that match as well. But guess what? That's not how the fight is made. Um, there was one cool leg lock. There was a cool leg lock. There was a cool Kimura attempt from the side mount. We don't care who won the fight. We just care that in the fight, there were lessons that may have been slipped by. They might have been missed by you guys. So we want to kind of bring them out and show you a couple of details. First, he landed in, uh, lay down please, in the half guard. Machida landed in, in Rampage's half guard here. Boom, boom, seated half guard position, elbow over the head for the wrist. He started to threaten the Kimura from here. And uh, went, uh, Rampage had a very loose half guard. This leg was kind of very casually trapping. Machida started wrapping this. He stepped out. He got to the side mount. But Rampage took the back hand, put it between his legs right here, like this, and was like trying to hug my thigh, just basically controlling between my legs right here, which was wise because what he was trying to stop was me from stepping this leg, my bottom leg, from stepping over the head right here. This leg gets over in this direction, or they can walk all the way around, they can catch the arm here. So he was just very concerned with the bottom leg traveling. Side note, while we're here in this position, I might as well show you the flying Kimura. <laughs> if he doesn't grab my leg or control the hip very well over here, 
I'm going to keep the kimono locked, double wrist grab, pinning it down to his hip, push off this foot, lift my hip straight up, bring the bottom leg out as if I'm getting up in base. Gracie combatives, getting up in base, jump up, boom. <laughs> It's not really a kimura, but it starts from the kimura setup, and you're kind of flying around the corner. Okay? Rewind that one and check it out again if you want to. But Rampage wasn't having that because he was hugging the leg, preventing the step over the head. Smart, smart. Um, so here we go. Half guard, that was one try. He tried to step out, tried to go for that. While he was hugging the leg, Machida realized he couldn't do any kimura, any jump around, any arm locks. So what did he do? He let go and he stepped over, he mounted. Great. From the mount, he creeped up. At Rampage is exhausted by now. He brought the blade across the neck, creeped up the knee to the head, inverted the leg, and then Machida stepped over the head here and grabbed this leg. Boom! Pull, oh, lock your bicep, bro. Mm -hmm. And pulling this leg, he brought Rampage right to his knees. That was the error, if there was one. Because what happens is, if you're going to grab a leg, it should be the inside leg. The inside leg is what we normally teach because that prevents Hidon from being able to twirl up and go to his knees towards you. Come up, because you my, can't. My, my bottom leg has to go out, it has to turn like this. And by pulling the top leg, you're doing that. You're bringing him up. So you bring him into the guard, which but allowed the stack up, which allowed the holding the bottom one up, doesn't allow my hips to turn. So you don't always have to grab a leg. In fact, if you were to fall here, if you would have just had his hand on the ground and kind of put heavy leg pressure, we like to switch hand on the ground, driving the hips, keep good pressure, use your shoulders for stability. There are many things you can do. The problem is we're so excited, we're so tight yes. to get the arm lock that you're almost like a, just like a rocking chair. He brought him up with the leg here. Rampage went up, and then we got to this point right here. Rampage stood up. Picked him up right here, and as he picked him up, go ahead. I'll let you no, up. I'm not gonna pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> but he picked him up. He picked him up to slam, but Machida let go and went to a standing position, which was very wise. He, he saw Rampage's slam from the previous, from the Pride fights. Incredible. Um, so altogether, great submission attempt there by Machida. Very wise defense by Rampage. The lock, the bicep, the going to the knees, the get up, and the slam. And then finally, after that stand up, they got into a clinch, which was pretty cool. But Cheetah's pushing the pace now because he knows he's losing the fight. So he gets in the clinch, we end up here, the arm came over the head, he turned the corner, and now we're in the rear clinch right here. And there was a very interesting heel hook attempt that probably slipped by, nobody saw it, 90% of the world, yeah. So from here, the, he was in a rear clinch, okay, and from here we have a standard rear takedown. But Machida went one step further, he took this leg and he let it go through, boom! <laughs> That's what he wanted to do, the inverted heel hook from the rear clinch, incredible. He would like to have got this, but as he sat, it was a little loose, so this leg slipped out that way, Rampage stood up, victory. You know? One more time on that one, one try, bro. So he yeah, here. extremely slow. Watch which leg he don't bring through. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let go a little soon so you can see, but I sit. Oh. Imagine I still pull him, he falls. It's ridiculous. Yeah, so the momentum in the body, it's almost like Hedon's body becomes a log behind my heels that trips me, and then the momentum brings me over and his leg snakes through and around for the heel. One more time, so you can make sure. We, or we apologize for wearing the same shorts, because it's like all these legs are getting entangled, okay? They're both long, and we have the same shorts, and you guys want to know really whose leg is whose. But Hedon is coming through the center, okay, watch this. Slow. And then I, he pulls me over his hip right here. I fall, and then this leg comes across here. This bottom leg has to come out to the other side. Critical. That's the most important detail. If he you doesn't, you're gonna we fall end up on your foot. We end up like this, and then you have no inverted heel hook because that leg's not there. So from here, he don't want to lock his legs on this side to protect his own foot. And if my foot is heavy on the ground, he wants to keep his elbow kind of close to my foot, and his hip is gonna kick my heel off the ground this way. So almost like I've been using the calf, the feet. And my elbow to come a little boom. Yeah, because I'm trying to keep my foot heavy. Go back. I want to prevent my foot, my heel from being exposed. As long as my foot's on the ground, I'm reasonably safe. But when Hedon kicks his hips into my heel and pulls my calf down to his stomach, it totally kicks it. He scoops it right away. Locks palm to palm. And now very slowly, it's one of the most dangerous submissions. His shoulders start to open that way and away as he drives his hips up and pressures. But you don't need that much pressure. It's very devastating. That's what Machida went for. It was beautiful. But Rampage was sweaty. He slipped the leg out. And he was safe there, you he know? He was the, right at the end of the round. Oh yeah, he was tired, so both were tired, both were sweaty. You gotta do whatever it takes. But that's a little, it's a very slick heel hook attempt from the reverse clinch that uh, we wanted to make sure we shared with you guys. Okay? Man, so incredible. Yeah. Someone said, a friend of ours said, yeah, it, it seems like Rampage is not really training that much jiu-jitsu. Right. You, you would think by now Rampage would be doing more jiu-jitsu. Right. And then we were like, nah, because he's doing something right. He survived 
Yeah, because Machida's just was legit. You he know? survived that whole fight, pretty much. Yeah, neutralized the submission, right. knew how to stop the team. If you just survived the submissions of a Jiu-Jitsu expert, guess what? You got to know what they're doing. So it's like, you know, uh, Rampage wasn't on the Jiu-Jitsu offensive, but he was certainly, you know, knowing enough of the angles, positions, and dangers to neutralize the threat. So He's getting better. Very respect, yeah, to both fighters. Incredible. Hopefully you guys gained something from here that uh, you may have not seen in the fight. Sometimes it's hard in the confusion and the commentary, but... Uh, one thing certain, the only reason we're doing this is because just maybe one of you who were previously intimidated or confused by MMA will better understand the nuances and the beauty of what's happening and maybe take up a class at your local Jiu-Jitsu school, you know, at the local certified Gracie Jiu-Jitsu training center. GracieUniversity.com Or, like we talked about before, if you're too scared to go into a school, go to GracieUniversity.com For the first time, we made lessons one, two, and three. The first three lessons of the Gracie Combatives White to Blue Belt curriculum are now free. Which means you just show up, create a free profile, and you're off and learning. Okay? Just uh, make sure that if you learn those techniques, and then you come to the academy, you know, you don't try to use them on me and he don't. Okay? Let us know what you know. You gotta keep it real. Keep everything on the up and up. Keep it real. Yep. Um, you guys, thank you very much. Have a good Thanksgiving if you're in America. If you're not in America, have a wonderful November 25th. <laughs> and uh, anything else? That's it. Have fun. Much respect and appreciation, guys. Thank you.